We've been friends with Nick for the past eight, nine years, and it felt like we could conspire with him to make a bigger film, a film about the kind of creative spirit, like what that burning little spark in all of us is, and what we do with our time on Earth, and how we measure it. The myth that exists around rock stars like Nick, I think, is a huge part of what they are. You know, these people have gone to great lengths and often great pains to create the things that they are. They're not famous for being famous for sake, you know, they're not celebrity in that kind of instant way. They're constructed, thought about, worked on, individual, remarkable creations. I wake, I write, I eat. Mm. I probably had more meals with you than my wife. I watch TV. Awesome. This is my 20,000th day on Earth. We had no interest at all in kind of quote-unquote fly-on-the-wall documentaries. We had a script that kind of got us from the start of the film to the end of the film. And in a lot of ways it was the same as the kind of structure you'd have for a fiction film. But the thing that it didn't have at all anyway was dialogue. We had a vague idea of, of where we wanted those conversations to go but everything that happened, happened live. It was improvised. The voiceovers that you hear in the film, Nick wrote those and he wrote those on tour. We would just send him topics, subjects that seemed kind of interesting or seemed to have some resonance with a, an idea in the film, but they were all written without context. We essentially had two timelines kind of working in parallel. So one we knew was the cycle of a song. So from the first notes on a piano in Nick's office, uh, where him and Warren are trying out ideas, all the way through to that same song, fully fledged, on the stage at the Sydney Opera House. And we needed another sort of solid timeline to, to be able to kind of give the film a backbone and for the, the viewer to kind of be able to orientate themselves. And a day seemed like a really good conceit for that. We were able to have the devices that we really wanted to use, him talking to a psychoanalyst, him visiting an archive and navigating his past and ideas about his past through objects that are kind of put in front of him. Songwriting is about counterpoint. Counterpoint is the key. Putting two disparate images beside each other and seeing which way the sparks fly. Like letting a small child in the same room as, I don't know, a Mongolian psychopath or something. And just sitting back and seeing what happens. The filmmaking process was actually a very comfortable one to slip into because it is such a collaborative process. There's so many different people involved in, in lots of different ways. I think the best sort of collaborations are those ones where you're propelled forward and you're self-assured in believing that you're going to be heard but also not worrying that you need to kind of retain a control and Nick is amazing at that. The people that he trusts he really opens up to them and I think that's why you can make really good stuff with them. The other device that we're really interested in to do with memory are those objects that act like monomic devices in your life that are able to unlock the memory of a person or a place or a time. The phrase Nick uses in the film when he's asked about this stuff is he says, well, it's all shit, isn't it? But it was important shit to me. We've always been interested in what it is about a culture that is able to consume its past. Certainly in the last 10 years, there has been a cultural slide toward doing things again. So playing that classic album again from beginning to end. I had to speed read your biography. Oh, you read that thing? Yeah. That wasn't the truth, sir. <laughs> Those personas, the Coens, the Dylans, the Caves, are, they're kind of quite fragile and I think we should look after them, you know? And I think that our culture is already shifting and meaning that they're not going to be too many of those in the future because you see too much. <laughs>